Hello there and a very good morning to you. Um, I hope you're all fine and dandy this morning. This is Sewing Street and my name's Debbie Shaw. Now we've got two live hours for you this morning and in the first one we're going to be featuring three brand new sewing machines for you. In the second hour we've got some fantastic fabrics, we've got denims, we've got some bag kits and we have some incredibly soft faux leathers as well. So if you can stay around for the next couple of hours it would be lovely to have your company. If you'd like to come and say hello, um, send in any comments, uh, any pictures and questions then you can do that on our Facebook page. So it's Facebook um, uh, forward slash sewing, well it's there on the screen isn't it, there you go. Go to Facebook, it was all going so smoothly and professionally. Um, <laughs> that's the Facebook page for Sewing Street, not the fans page. And if you go to visitor posts and you put a post on there, then that's the page that I've got open on my phone in the studio so I can pick up your messages and, uh, and say hi to you. So let us know what you're up to, what you're doing today, um, what are your plans, um, what's your weather like. It's been glorious for the last couple of days around where, where I live certainly, but apparently going to be a bit colder over the weekend. So are you planning a weekend of sewing. Is this a new craft for you, or a new hobby, or you're trying a different genre of sewing? So we'd love to be sewing along with you, um, so you know, stay with us if you can. We're going to be live every morning for a couple of hours, for as long as we possibly can be. Um, we are at a, a reduced staff, a skeleton staff, so there's only the two of us in, in the studio again today, so it's just me and Joe again this morning. Um, okay, now then, every morning wherever we can, we're going to bring you an early bird special, and that early bird special is a reduced price item, and you've got two today and these I think are rather stylish so we have a little case here and all the needles and pins are already in it and there's a pair of scissors in the back as well and it's got a hard case and it's padded too so it's lovely quality and look at the foiling on there it's a it's a little bit at market this one I think so perfect for yourself perfect for traveling something that's going to be really useful to keep in your handbag um, for emergency repairs and if you're going to um, a workshop or when, when we're allowed to again, then um, you can take this with you as well. You've got spare pages in there as well, so there's, there's more room if you need to take more pins and scissors and uh, needles with you. But it's not just this. There's also the little scissor keeper. So you're getting two pairs of scissors for your £9.98. And these fit really nice and snugly inside their own little pocket. So they come with a little protective um, paper on it, obviously take those off when you get them home. But they're, they're quite vintage looking, but that's coming off now, um, with the engraving on the handles. It, it looks like the kind of thing that my mum or my grandma used to use when, uh, when they were sewing when they were younger. Perfect embroidery a size of scissors as well for little snips for cutting away threads, or maybe you're a hand sewer, you're a smocker, or a um, a cross stitcher maybe, these are going to be really useful for you and they're lovely quality scissors and I always say with scissors they've got to be sharp right up to the point. Some of them aren't. Now then, that 3.95 PMP all day that you see on your screen is really important to mention because if you order your early bird now and it's getting busy for this, so while we have the stock, and then you come back later on and think, oh, I wanted some of that faux leather, or you know, I'm going to treat myself to a new sewing machine, we'll only charge you the one postage for the whole day. And that's even if you come back to the website later on this afternoon when we're not on air anymore, um, anything you order up until midnight tonight, you will still only pay that one postage. So if you're interested in the early bird, make sure you get hold of this and you buy it and you go through to check out and you pay for it in the, um, in the knowledge that, um, or the peace of mind that if you do want to order anything else before midnight tonight, you're not going to be charged any extra for your postage. So you can order on the phone lines. It's um, a UK based phone uh, centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Or you can go to sewingstreet.com and, uh, and place your order there and have a look on the website to see all of the different things the fabrics, the machines, the haberdashery and the tools that we have available for you. So a saving of uh, £9.98, GXX, C76 is the item number. While you're there on the website, we've been trying to bring you an early bird every morning. It's supposed to last for a day. They're still there. We've still got, we did sell out of the best press yesterday, which was our early bird, but we do still have some of the, um, the Gutterman threads in the box. And it's still at the same price, the early bird price, and we still have the Alpha uh, pink cutting mat as well, the A3 mat. Um, but we do have limited stocks of those, so go and have a quick look while we have the stock right now. 
We've noticed as well when a lot of you are ordering first thing in the morning, we're getting so many new viewers and new customers. So if you're one of our new customers, then welcome along. It's lovely to have you as part of the Sewing Street family. We're quite new. We've only been going for around about a month. So we're still growing and we're still building, but we're getting busier and busier by the day, which is wonderful news. Um, because that means that although at the moment we're live for two hours in the morning, we did start off at one, before long, hopefully, we'll be three hours live. We'll be four hours live and we'll be five hours live so we can fill up most of your day with wonderful sewing supplies and as many demonstrations as we can fit in. As I mentioned earlier, we are on a limited staff at the moment. We're not um, having any guests into the studio or guest presenters or demonstrators for safety reasons. Um, but myself and John, my co-presenter, um, will be bringing you as many de demonstrations ourselves as we possibly can. Oh gosh, we've only got 25 of these left. Oh, and I haven't even told, well, you haven't got time. You have not got time to go and take a look on the John Lewis website and see that this is a loan of £6.50. So I'm just going to tell you that. So if you think, I need to shop around, I'm being frugal, I want to make sure that I'm getting the very best deal, I, I can tell you you are. Um, so only £9.98. You're saving £3 off the recommended retail price, but the stocks are dwindling very quickly. Maybe it's a stocking filler. Yeah, it's worth, worth thinking about. Um, I mean, stretching out, I know it's where are we, not even in April till next week, are we? Um, but stretching out the cost of Christmas when we're all going to be on a budget this year. So why not start with small that looks expensive and start early if you can as well. So for yourself, for a gift, you've got um, maybe thinking about Easter gifts that are a little bit more purposeful than an egg. Um, actually, eggs are quite rare these days, aren't they? Eggs are rare as hen's teeth. Um, but I was thinking the chocolate variety. This is going to last so much longer, I won't put weight on your hips. <laughs> Less than 20. We're really counting down with these. So, again, check out your baskets if you're ordering online. If you want to order on the phone lines, then it'd be a good idea right now to call 0800 001 4433. Um, as long as you're hanging on to those in your basket, then they're not actually yours. So, just to just to let you know. Um, right. Oh, Jean says, morning, Debbie. Drinks, no, my coffee. Oh, drinks now. Oh, drinking my coffee. Sitting comfortable. What are you doing, Jean? Um, <laughs> what kind of dr drinks? No, my coffee. That sounds like you've been caught at. Is that drinks? No, no, it's coffee. Sitting comfortably watching, have a good day and stay safe. Thank you, Jean, and, and yourself. <laughs> um, we're spreading the word. Um, we've got, I, I don't understand this, which is why I haven't mentioned it before. Hashtag stay in and sew. I don't understand hashtags, to be perfectly honest. Um, my daughter does my Instagram and all that kind of stuff. I don't get the ats and I don't get the hashtags. But that's what we're doing, you see? Hashtag stay in and sew because we're trendy hip young cats and we're on the ball and, and, we, yeah, and we're, we're up there and, and down there and out and, uh, and around there. Gosh, I'm sounding old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Joe, my director, say no, no, no while he's nodding. But apparently that's what we're doing. Now then, promised you three brand new sewing machines to Sewing Street. So let's start off over here. And there's the Elna sewing machines. Um, I know I say it a lot, but I'm going to say it again. If you're in the market for a new sewing machine, maybe upgrading or you're investing in your very first machine, go for a big brand. A big brand that's been going for a long, long time um, will be able to give you help and support and peace of mind. Elna have been going a long, long time. It's a huge company. It's the same company as Janome. Um, it's a British-based company and they give two-year warranties with all, all of their sewing machines and they have a helpline as well. That's really important. So if you see the name Elna on any sewing machine, you know you're investing in quality, whether you're investing in an entry-level machine or you're investing in one that's cost you thousands of pounds. Quality peace of mind is what you're getting. So we have three choices. So the first machine we're looking at here is the 550. I'm going to say something that you don't hear very often on shopping telly. Don't buy this one. It's a lovely machine. 
It's got your warranty, it's, it's a stylish machine, it's quiet, it's easy to use. It has 50 stitches. You can use it with or without a foot pedal because it's got a start stop button and it's got a speed control as well. It's got an easy stitch selection. Um, it's got a needle up, needle down position. It has a lock stitch. It has an automatic needle threader. It's got a press a foot pressure dial. It's got lots and lots of features. It's got its 50 stitches coming out the side here. So so you can see them right in front of you, but don't buy this one. Sorry, 550. I've taken a shine to you, big brother. This is the 560. Now the 560 has all of those features that I've just shown you on the 550, um, but we've got 100 stitches. So it's, it's a little bit of an advancement on the 550, but I don't want you to buy this one. It's very nice, there's nothing wrong with it. It's very smooth, it's very quiet, it's very quality. All of those same features, so you've got your start, stop button, your reversing button, you have your speed control. Oh, this one's got an extra look. It's got thread snippers, it's got the up down needle position, it's got the lock stitch. I haven't even used this one look because I don't want you to buy this one. Um, around the side here, you've got 100 stitches, so 50 on each one of those boards. But the reason I don't want you to buy this one is because we've got the 570. So I'm sorry, sorry guys, I'm moving you out of the way. Off you go. You're very nice, but you've been outshone. This is the 570. So this one has all of the same features as you've seen on the previous two machines and then extra. So you have your start stop button so you don't need to use the foot control. Um, you have the needle up, needle down. You have the thread snippers. Um, you've got the presser foot pressure dial. And this time you have 380 stitches. You are 300, I know, 380. So in those two bars at the side that I showed you previously. So there you go, look. You have 50 stitches. Oh, no, you don't. You have, oh, yeah, 50 stitches here. You have 50 stitches here. You have 50 stitches here. You have another 50 stitches here. And then when you take a look in the back, because there's not enough room on the machine to put all the stitches, take a look in the back of the instruction booklet and you have another 89 stitches here with the alphabet and numbers. And then you have another 89 stitches here. Now we haven't finished there because oh, all of the machines do come with an extension table. All of the machines come with a hard cover and all of the machines, we are going to give you two meters of fabric for absolutely nothing. They're absolutely free. But with this machine, we're also going to give you a walking foot and we're also going to give you a free motion embroidery foot. So the bundle that you're getting for free with this machine is worth £80. That makes your machine a lot more affordable, doesn't it? So you have an absolutely feature-packed sewing machine, which is a compact sewing machine. It's not huge. You know, it's not one of those machines that's going to completely take over the dining table. But you have an Elna sewing machine, so you know that you have the quality and you've got the reliability. Um, and you've got a, a machine that's going to be able to cope with any of your sewing projects, no matter what kind of fabric you're sewing through, whether you're quilting or whether you're uh, dressmaking or homewares, you're making bags. You can drop the feed dogs on these. They're very easy to use. Um, this would be suitable for a complete beginner that's never sewn a stitch in their life before. And I think you'll find, if you are um, in the market for a new machine, there are some very affordable machines out there. You can buy sewing machines for under £100. Be aware um, of the quality that you're investing in, because normally you get what you pay for. If you're buying a machine that's under maybe 250 pounds, it probably won't be a digital one, it won't be computerised. I find they are more difficult to use because you have clunky um, dials. The, uh, rarely will you find an electronic sewing machine where the needle will automatically stop, or, uh, stop up or down, so stop in the correct position. If you have a needle that stops halfway down and you try to pull the thread out, the tensions are still going to be engaged and you get into a little bit of fight with it. Then you're having to wiggle the hand wheel at the side to try and pull the, the wheel through. A computerised sewing machine 
machine, that's, that's all taken care of for you. With a computerised sewing machine, when you choose the stitch, the machine will automatically set a, set a default stitch length, stitch width and the stitch tension, which you can override if you wanted to create different effects with the machine. And with a computerised sewing machine, you're going to find more stitch capability than you do with an electronic machine because the electronic machines are restricted to how many stitches they can actually fit into a dial. So my recommendations for looking for a new machine are big brand and go for computerised if you possibly can. Now you've seen obviously the three sewing machines and seriously they are all fantastic. If 569 is out of your budget then our 550 is a perfectly good machine but you have more growing capability as a beginner sewer with the um, with a 570 because it has more stitches for you to choose from and because it has more stitches doesn't mean that it's more complicated it just means that you've got a few more buttons to press to choose the numbers because that's as easy as it is. I find find using a computerised sewing machine easier than trying to set the timer on my cooker. Still haven't set it, can't figure that one. I, I can't even figure out how to switch the bottom oven on on the thing and I've had it for years, you turn it on, nothing happens and then I find myself pressing all of the buttons two at a time, three at a time, just, oh the light's on, I'm working. Um, <laughs> silly isn't it, I can create my own website, that's fine but that timer on the cooker, no. But seriously, a very simple sewing machine. So um, for beginners, yeah, th th this is brilliant for you. Um, and it's something that the whole family can share. So if you're the more experienced sewer, but you have somebody in your household that's learning how to sew, same machine. You, both of you will be able to use it without having to reset anything. Maybe a beginner will slow down the speed a little bit, that's all. Um, are you upgrading? Are you using the same machine that you borrowed or you've inherited? I'd, I'd, I recommend for absolute complete beginners, maybe don't buy a sewing machine. Borrow one if you can, um, or maybe you do have an, an older machine because there's always the chance that you won't enjoy it, in which case there's no point in spending anything, let alone £569 on a machine. So try it out, try sewing, see if you like it. If you do, buy yourself a machine that you can invest in. But if you have decided, right, I'm going to treat myself to an upgrade, if you're still using a hand crank, oh, save those, they're lovely ornaments, um, or if you're using an electronic machine, put that on an auction site and put the money towards buying something that's going to grow with you, help you with your skills, give you perfect stitching, professional finish to your stitches, and it's really easy to use as well. Shall we see it in action? I think it's about time we did some sewing. So, I'm going to pop the extension table on with this one because it should fit. Get a hard cover as well, like hard cover. A lot of machines will come with a flimsy plastic thing that's not worth even taking out the packaging. That could be your first sewing project if you've got one of those machines. A decent cover. I hope we've got a decent bag for you coming up, so maybe that'll be an option for you. So I'm going to take off the extension table, accessory compartment, which just slides off. This gives you a free arm, so if you're sewing around in circles, maybe you're bag making or um, cuffs and trouser legs and things like that, you can sew in a circle by doing that but then your extension table simply slides onto the side, like so. Oh, I'm just off my mat, let me move that over. That's better, there we go. So now you've got a larger working area, and if you are doing free motion embroidery, remember the get, getting the foot included, um, you've got somewhere to rest your wrist, so you, you're sewing comfortably, shall we say. Um, right, let me take you through the feet that you're getting as well, because this is important. The same feet and accessories are included in all three machines. So even if you're going for the 550, you're going to get all of these. I was just about to tip those out onto the extension table, then I thought that's going to make a heck of a noise. So, oh, there's that bag really noisy as well. Sorry about that. You have an, an extra spool holder, so you can do twin needle sewing. You've got extra spool caps just in case you lose some, but you've got two different sizes, so two of the large and two of the small. I've got one of the small ones on there. The reason you have different size spool caps is an important one, because if you're sewing, um, well, let, me get, let me get some thread and just show you, so just bear with me a sec. Just, again, just going down into the cellar. Oops. <laughs> so, <laughs> Small um, reel of thread, whoa, come here, small spool cap. 
because then as the thread comes off the spool, it's not going to be restricted. If you put a large spool cap on there, the thread's not going to flow off smoothly. It's going to get, uh, it'll get kind of distracted, if you like, by the large spool cap. That can pull at the thread as it's coming off your machine, and that can give the illusion of having a tension problem. It's not. It's just that you've got the wrong size of spool cap. So if you've got larger threads, go for the larger spool cap, and it's the same with the small spool cap on the large one. You, the thread's not going to come off properly. Oh, while you're there, always have the thread coming off the top, not off the bottom, because um, that's the way that it's been designed. That's the way that it's gone on the roll, um, on the spool, so that's the way that it should come off as well. And that, again, can affect your tension. So we haven't finished yet, though. I love going through all the goodies that come with machines. So here you have a blind hem foot. So you can do um, invisible hems on things like curtains or trouser legs or skirts, any kind of garments. All of your instructions are included there as well, by the way. So all of these feet are explained in the instructions. This is a satin stitch foot. So that's going to be for the stitches that look as though they've got close zigzags, close together. This is an over edge foot. So this one's actually got a brush on the side. So the way that, whoops, come here, the way that it works, those bars that go through the centre are to help keep the fabric flat. And this little brush, as you're sewing along the edge of your fabric, will tuck in the, the fraying edges of woven fabric to give you a neat edge. And you can see on the feet as well, that says foot C. When you choose an over edge stitch on the screen, it will advise you which foot you need to choose. This one is a quarter of an inch foot. So the distance between the hole that the needle goes in and this, it looks like a blade at the side, but that's a guide. That distance is exactly a quarter of an inch. So if you're doing patchwork and quilting, then that is going to be the foot for you. You've got a zipper foot, but you expect to have one of those. Um, you have your standard foot, which is on the machine. And then don't forget your freebies. So I'm going to take this one out because I shall put this on the machine later on. I wasn't, I wasn't going to take it out, that's why it's still sealed up. I'm making lots of noise again. Do it over there. Okay, walking foot, seam guide just fell out the back, and we have I've ripped it now as well. And you have the free motion embroidery foot. So your walking foot, if you're sewing through thicker layers of fabric. So if you are a quilter, if you're bag making, if you're using wadding, um, then this is the foot that you're going to go uh, put on the machine. I will show you this later on. This bar here will sit on top of the screw that holds the needle in place. And you know how you have your feed dogs at the bottom of your machine that pull the fabric through? This has got them at the top as well. So as your needle bounces up and down, so do those feed teeth. And this brings the top of your fabric, the top layer of your fabric, through your machine at the same rate as the bottom of your fabric, preventing slippage. And your darning foot, or free motion embroidery foot. These two only come with the 570, by the way, so you're not going to get these if you're ordering the other two machines. But this is an open toed clear foot, so you can see where you're going. Um, and it works in kind of the same way as the, the walking foot, as in this part goes over the top of the needle bar, and that bounces up and down as you're sewing. So the foot hops across your work. So you can darn, you can mend holes with this, but you can do a little bit of uh, free motion design as well. Now, on this machine as well, I'll put it behind me, we have some decorative stitches and again the alphabet that you can program. So let me just get some scrap fabric and we'll have a play. We've had some messages this morning, morning to you. Uh, Lynn's messaged in. Hi Lynn. She says, morning Debbie and Joe. Loving my jacket, thank you very much. It's, 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 it's a similar um, kind of fabric to the faux leather that we've got later on in the show, because you could make a jacket like this. It's actually polyester, so it's not... I'm, I'm trying to avoid leather and suede whenever I can. So, oh, Karen's message in as well. Hi, Karen. Um, thank you for keeping us going, appreciate it. And stay safe for, thank you, and you. Uh, and Cheryl sent a picture of her cushions. Oh, there you go, look. Um, 
Oh, where are you? There you go. Oh, this is the this is similar to the panels that we had on the show yesterday. But these were the first. I love those colours. I, I did with, with those <laughs> with those panels. We actually had two choices um, of panels, and there was one going to be one on my show and one on John's show. And I happened to be in the office when the fabric came in, so they were on my show. Um, oh, Lisa's messaged in as well. Hi, Debbie. So lovely to see you. Thank you. And I appreciate your commitment to keeping us safe. Thank you. Or keeping us sane. <laughs> Thank you. And you, you're keeping me sane as well. Honestly, if I hadn't got the sewing to do and you lot to talk to, I might have to do the gardening or something. So we have a memory. Whoops. And that, there's an M button here. So, um, with the alphabet, again, because um, it's a compact sewing machine, we only have the actual decorative and utility stitches down the side here. So, if you wanted to program in an alphabet, you do need to go to your manual. I'll show you that in just a second, but let's do some decorative stitches. Um, the stitches that are on the front here are the ones that you're going to use most of all. So, you have a straight stitch, you've got a zigzag stitch, you've got a decorative or an edge stitch, and a standard buttonhole stitch. Um, you can elongate the stitches, you can elongate, oh, sorry, that's to choose the stitches to move up and down. And here you can elongate the width and the length of the stitch as well. But you've got one, two, A, A modes. So number one is the first sheet that I showed you at the side, number two is the second, and these are the two um, alphabets. Um, across here, I can choose the mode by just pressing the button, you can see the light changing. If I want to cancel any of the, um, the icons that I'm putting into the machine, that's the C. This is the memory that I'm going to put in there, and I can actually put the thread snippet into the memory as well. So let's put together some decorative stitches. I can put together up to 20. So I'm going to go on my second page down here. Um, so both of these two on number one, both of these two on number two, and then the A's I need to refer to the book. So let's have a look at, that's a fancy one, isn't it? Stitch number 88. So I'm going to scroll up, and I've got tens and units over here. So I can actually go down to, is the quickest way to get to eight, and down to to 88. You can see it's got a, a, a recommended stitch length and stitch width. I can't adjust that, that's why it's kind of chirping at me. Some of those you'll be able to override. And I'm just going to press M. Now I know that stitch number 88 is the first one of the letters. So let's choose another one. Let's go into the second section. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm on number two there, and go for 18. So back up again. 18, memory. That's my second stitch. Then I'm going to have a couple of hearts. So I'm going to go 48, memory. And what have I got on the second page? Uh, let's have a, a, a leaf design, 74. Memory. Now, I haven't got the foot pe pedal plugged in on this machine, so I'm going to use the start-stop button. So simply press here, and away we go. So just guide the fabric through. Never push your fabric. A lot of the time with beginners, you'll see them doing this and that can distort the stitches. All we need to do is to make sure that's going in a straight line. And because we've got embroidery stitches, you can see the machine actually going backwards and forwards as it's stitching out the design. So that's almost finished because I've only put a short design in there. So when it comes to an end, it will automatically stop. Oh, I got a bit carried away there, didn't I? You can slow it down, by the way. So if I move the... The slider on the front, it's got a picture of the hare and the tortoise. You can see how I can speed up and slow down. And that will also work when the foot pedal's plugged in. So if you're teaching somebody how to sew or you've got youngsters using the machine, you probably find they find it easier to, um, to sew. Do you know what? I, I didn't press the stop button. It's just going to carry on sewing until I tell it to stop. So let's tell it to stop. And cut the thread. And there's my design. So if I want it to stop, there is a number um, on the final 
um, sheet, which is uh, number two. So it's stitch number 89, 99, sorry. And it's the lock stitch icon. So if you program that into the end of the, um, the sequence on the screen, then it will automatically stop. Shall we do some words? Yeah. May as well, but <laughs> we've got the ability to do so, so why not? So this is where you need to reference the inst instructions in the, in the back of your book. So it's telling me I'm in mode A. So let's go mode A here. And then let's type in, let's do Debbie. So I've got 13, one, two, three, memory. And 14, that's easy, memory. And then two Bs, which is 11. And an I, that's an 18. Oh, I got that wrong, haven't I? Is that the numbers? Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, 18, memory, and then 14 is E, memory, and then I'm going to go back into that mode 2 and put 99, so that should stop. You can put spaces in as well. Um, did I press the wrong one there? Oh, oh, so back to 2. And 99. Memory. I, I was trying to do two things at once. Um, there is, if you have a look on the instructions here, stitch number 89, it looks like a square because it's a square. Um, but these are spaces. So 87, 88 and 89 are all different sizes of spaces. We were very close up there, weren't we? But you, you get the gist there. So we've got full stops and you've got abbreviations, but if you wanted to put a gap, that'll just put one stitch at the bottom and then go straight over to the next stitch. So let's press start and see what happens. You could um, embroider onto ribbon. You could be doing your handmade labels with these. Maybe it's labels to put inside quilts, um, or you want to personalize anything that you're making. There we go. So the display is changing so you know the number that you're counting down. Look who can't spell her own name. <laughs> but look at the quality of the stitches there as well. They're, they're, they're pretty perfect. So I'm going to have um, a play with some of the other stitches. Because there are different kinds of effects that you can create with these as well. I do have two Bs, but you know, never goes perfect, does it? Um, the stitches in between there, if you wanted to snip into those, then you can do as well. They're quite easy to remove. Okay, don't forget if you have any questions, come and ask them. If there's anything particular you'd like me to show you, then just let me know and I shall do my best. If you've got any questions that I can't answer, I shall go away and find the answer and let you know. But I wanted to take a look at, because a lot of the stitches and a lot of the techniques um, are the same kind of thing that you could do with the, um, the 720 that we had on the show yesterday. So if you have a look at yesterday's show on YouTube, um, I stitched um, an heirloom stitch with clear thread on the top, increased the tension and pulled the bottom thread through. This machine's got the same stitch on, so I'm not going to demonstrate that again. In fact, I will, I will, because I'm going to change the colour of the bobbin thread and see what happens. So, I had an orange somewhere. An orange colour, not an orange. So I'm going to leave my blue thread on the bottom. You can see how easily this threads when we do this as well. And change my thread to the orange on the top. So it goes in there. So we're going to go around here and down there and round and back up and through the take up leave and then back down again. And you've got one little tension hook here and then one little tension hook right on the top of the needle. It's important you go through every one of those little hooks. Put the, knee, uh, the presser foot down so you can feel that the tension's tight on the thread. The needle threader comes down at the side and it locks in place. And I like that because a lot of needle threaders you don't. You have to hold it while you're fiddling around trying to get the thread there. This comes across the side and, oh, go on there, and under the one hook like so. 
pull the thread across the front of the needle, hold it up slightly at the back, and there's a tiny hook that's gone through the eye of the needle and has grabbed onto that thread, and it's made a little loop at the back here. Oh, there you go. So when you pull that loop through, the needle's threaded. Now the stitch I'm gonna have a play with, so just put that through the middle of the foot, is number, where have you gone? I'm talking to the machine now, it's a bit worrying. Oh, well there are 200 to go through, so just bear with me a second. <laughs> um, number 96 and number 97. So let's go for 97. This is the same stitch, but the 97's a little bit longer than the 96. So I need to be in mode one. Um, choose stitch number, what did I say it was, 97. Put my foot down. And away we go. Now when you're stitching out any of the decorative stitches like this, do have a play because I'm going to increase the tension on this one part way through and just see what happens. Oh, stop. Cut. So you can see I've got a thick stitch and a thin stitch and the blue from the bottom bobbin is coming up in dots in between. So if you use the same colour thread, it'll look almost like a, a little row of petals. So thick and thin, thick and thin. But because I increase the tension halfway through, I'm getting just small amounts of the bottom bobbin thread coming through, which is quite a, quite a nice kind of look. Let me have a go at that again and just play with that tension a little more. And I'll see if we can create a different effect with it. So this time I put the tension right up to the top. So it should really pull the bottom thread through. So we're seeing more of it. Normally you don't touch the tension on your sewing machine, but this time I just want to have a play and see what happens. When you do increase the tension, make sure you turn it back again afterwards. So this time I've got more of the blue from the bottom coming through. So yesterday on the show, if you have a look at that one, I used a clear thread um, in the top. Remember to change your tension back again. I only used a clear thread in the top, not in the bobbin. And I used a... Um, a coloured thread in the bottom and you couldn't see the clear thread, all you see is the bottom thread coming through so that's quite a nice decorative effect. So i just put my blue back on again, that wasn't the one I was using also. Oh, be alright. So, so quick to thread as well. If you're using um, the decorative stitches and you're sewing with lots of different colours of threads and you're changing them a lot, Always buy a sewing machine with a needle threader. It just makes it so much quicker to thread your needle when you're changing or if you run out of thread. It's normally the chore, isn't it, the threading up? But this is so quick. There we are, it's done. Now there's also stitches on here that you can use in, um, in other ways. So, so if I can show you in here, it might be easier for you to see. Um, Faggoting stitches, which are things like number 10, and number 11, and number 14, number 17 you could use, number 21. These are stitches that have a straight line in the centre, so you can use those uh, for stitching in the ditch. And the stitch in the centre kind of disappears into your seam, so you just see the decorative stitches either side. But a faggoting stitch will join two pieces of fabric together. You could use these as well. These are primarily smocking stitches, but number 77 you could use there. Um, 81 you could use, 79 you could use. So have a think about things that you can do with the stitches, not just edge stitching and sewing seams. So with this one, I've got three pieces of fabric and some pins. Sharon's sent a question. She says, hi, Debbie. She does lots of different types of projects. Could I do both my bag making, dressmaking and patchwork on this machine? Absolutely no reason why not at all. If you're doing, to be honest, 
If you're a quilter and you're just a quilter and you're making lots and lots of quilts and you're making big quilts, I wouldn't buy this machine. I'd go for the maybe the 720. I know it's a more expensive machine, but you're going to really take advantage of the space that you get in here because you're probably going to roll those quilts up as you're stippling, as you're doing your free motion embroidery. So you might be restricted on the space here. You can still do that, not everybody rolls the quilts up, but that, if it's only quilting that you're doing, then I'd suggest you go for one with a bigger throat. But if you're bag making, you're going to be using thicker layers of fabric. Um, if you're um, making curtains, you're probably going to be using thicker layers of fabric. So you need a machine, not necessarily big in size, but that has a powerful motor. That's where that name Elna comes into effect again. Um, Change your needle for a denim needle if you're sewing through thick layers. So if you're sewing like the, um, the PU leather that we've got in the next hour, or if you're um, sewing through cork and uh, lots of layers, if you're using wadding and interfacing as well. I always say that the needles like the fuse of a sewing machine, it'll be the first thing to break. So if your fabric's too thick, the needle will break. So that's why you need a denim needle, because they're so much stronger. Um, but you've got a powerful machine. It, it may not look it size-wise because it's compact, but it will pack a punch no matter what kind of project that you're making. So, yes, definitely. I've got a question from Jan as well. Uh, and she says that she's got a larger machine um, to stay in the workroom. But she's looking for something to take to classes and take to her caravan. Perfect. Uh, should we measure it? Because it's, I say it's a powerful machine, but it's not huge. So if you take off the accessory compartment, extension table, I'm in inches, so I might be an old-fashioned gal, but uh, width-wise, you're talking, well, let's go 17 inches, including the hand wheel at the side. So 17 inches by, say, 12 inches by width-wise at its widest, 8 inches. So it's not a massive machine and it's not heavy. It's powerful, but it's not heavy. And it does come with a guarantee as well. You've got a two-year guarantee included as well. So, yeah, but, oh, and it's nice having a hard cover as well. You know, particularly if you're, um, if this is going to be rattling around in the back of the caravan, because it'll help protect it from knocks. I'm not saying that you're going to be driving erratically. But, you know, when you've got a machine that's on the move, it's nice to protect it, isn't it? We have a carry bag. That might be quite useful for you, because it fits. <laughs> it wouldn't be very useful if it didn't, would it? Um, this is really useful because although, whoops, although you've got the handle on the top and you've got the hard cover um, which pokes through, the, the, the handle pokes through the hard cover, you'll find a bag a lot more comfortable to use. Um, so you've got a separate pocket on the front. I like to keep things that might scratch my machine in here. So if I've got scissors or rotary cutters and even the power lead, that will go in the pocket on the front. The straps are like seatbelt straps, so they're really strong and they go all the way around the bottom of the bag. So you've got full support and with a really strong bag and as you can see you've got feet on the bottom there as well um, it's only £12.99 expect in stores to pay 30 to 50 pounds for a bag like this um, it looks a bit pink on our screen it's actually bright red so I don't know what you're seeing at home but it's, it's a really bright pillar box red but £12.99 if you've got a couple of machines go for a couple of them our six 60 sewing machine which is a lot bigger than this one will fit in there to squeeze but that's really useful anyhow if I get in so I've just put a couple of pins to hold this in place so I've got two pieces I'm carrying on without even telling you what I'm doing aren't I um, I've got two pieces of fabric and they're folded in at the edge and pressed and then I've put another piece of coordinating fabric behind there with a gap so I want to see I want to see all of the fabric so try and keep that gap equidistant and then which stitch were we going to go for we didn't decide did we any one of those stitches that I mentioned so let's let's just go for I think I was in mode two bear with me and we'll do stitch number 10 so mode two 10 and then press go to start and guide the centre of the foot, so I'll try and concentrate and tell. The centre of the foot, I'm not looking directly at this, I'm hoping I haven't missed any bits, over the gap. We'll stop at the pins because you'll get the idea. 
So now my stitch, oh, I slightly missed there, look, that's because I'm sewing from the side. But that stitch kind of bridges the gap. If I had to use a red stitch, that would have looked amazing. So that's actually holding the two pieces of fabric together. You could do that, if you're very careful, without the fabric at the back, so it gives a lacy kind of effect, in which case I'd put some tear-away stabiliser behind it. Uh, so it's stabiliser behind it, stitch over the top, use a nice strong thread, and then when you remove it, you've got a little gap down the side of the fancy stitch, which is really pretty. And another thing, and another thing, you can do with the faggoting stitch is to use something like yarn or crochet yarn or something like that and embroider over it. So let's do, let's do number 14. I'm just going to lay this right in the middle of the foot and press go. And through we go. Oh, that's looking nice. Can't see yet, can you? Right, let's stop. That's pretty, isn't it? So that could be maybe around a hem, um, across the bottom of a pocket. Could be an extra little bit of detail on a on a block if you're um, if you're quilting. Maybe you've got something at home already, like a plain white tablecloth that you just want to make look a, a little bit more up to date. Maybe you're doing a, a bit of upcycling. Then that's a nice technique and a nice little stitch to to be able to use as well. I think. I forgot to tell you when I'm going through all of those feet that we have. We've got a buttonhole foot inside here as well. So let's show you a buttonhole. And there's another couple of features on the machine actually that we haven't had a look at. So I'll show you those as well. The buttonhole foot comes in two parts and this is the kind of buttonhole foot that measures the button. So just take a look at that at the moment while I get a button. In the cellar again. Oh, it's very dusty down here, and I'm sure I can hear rats. And there's cobwebs all over the place. <coughs> there's cobwebs everywhere. Whew. So I've got my button. The button sits in the back of the buttonhole foot like so, and then squish that together. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> the button hasn't actually fallen off my jacket, it was in the cellar. Um, the gap between these two points here is going to be the size of the buttonhole and that is slightly larger than the size of the button itself so it should fit absolutely perfectly. There is a plate that comes with this foot as well um, which you can use if you're, if you're sewing with thicker fabrics. So the two of those will sit together and you feed your thick fabric underneath the two layers here um, and it helps, helps to keep those flat but we don't need to use that because I'm just sewing on cotton at the moment. Remember all of that's in your instructions. So let me get my fabric. I keep catching that. So drop off this foot, all of this in your instructions remember, and drop this one on. I'm just going to turn the hand wheel up and down once and that's going to take my thread through to the bottom so let's pull that out of the way. And I just wanted to show you here, there's a lever on the side that you'll need to pull down. Not that one. It is that one. And this is a sensor. So that gap that I showed you, um, the size of the buttonhole, as you're stitching the buttonhole, that second bar will touch the sensor and make the machine turn around and come back in the right direction. If you don't pull the bar down, you'll have an error message so that the machine knows that it's about to stitch a buttonhole and it'll say, hang on a minute, you haven't pulled your bar down. So let's... Pop my fabric under here, foot down, choose the buttonhole stitch, and again, that's instant. And I, because I haven't got the foot pedal in, I'm just going to press start. And then I might, I could go and put the kettle on. I could go and have another cup of tea. I could tidy up the cellar a little bit while I'm pulling down here, like that. I could um, have a look if there's any messages from you. On Facebook, I've got nothing since Jean. Um, I could do a bit of online shopping, actually. And, oh, there you go, it's finished. So I'm, I'm, I'm still on the phone, 
the machine has completely sewn that buttonhole and finished all together. So let's just snip that thread and take a look what we've got. So there's my perfect buttonhole. Let me just snip that thread away. And we can cut into this and make a hill because that's always useful. There we go. And there we go. Oh, I just want to mention as well, just while you're watching, somebody suggested to me the other day that a little bit of fray stop um, would work on the hole there just to stop that fraying. I mean, it's not going to fray so that it comes undone, but it can look a little bit untidy. Or you can just trim all of those frayed bit back, back to the stitches. Just be careful you don't cut through your buttonhole stitches. Um, there is a limited amount of the free feet available. So the bundle that comes with the, you're getting the two metres of fabric. So there's all of those and the walking foot, which I was going to get round to showing you, but probably won't have time. Um, walking foot and you've got the free motion embroidery foot. You've got a bundle here which is worth £80. These, this bundle only comes with this machine. So we've actually got more machines than we have the bundles. So if you wanted to get hold of that £80 bonus, then um, make sure you're one of the first to order. We're okay for the moment. Now then, I'm going to sew a button on. When I went through all of those feet, I didn't see a button sewing on foot. So I'm not going to use a button sewing on foot. We can get round it. Excuse me. Seller again. <laughs> so, I'm going to drop the end of the take-up lever onto the side of the button just above where the holes are and choose a zigzag stitch. And then I'm going to drop the feed dogs, which is around the back of the machine around here. So I don't want those moving. So I'll show you what I'm doing there in just a second when I've done the stitch. And then I'm going to turn the hand wheel until I've got the needle going through both holes. Okay. And then press start and stop. And there's my button sewn on. Um, if you wanted to make a shank underneath there, then if you've got a cocktail stick or something like that, a matchstick or something, put that underneath the button in between the two holes and that will raise it up and then you can tie your thread around there afterwards. But now my button's sewn on. Let's pop that through the buttonhole. And I've got a perfect fit. Easy. So I just want to make sure I've covered everything with this machine. We've got that, we've done that. Let me just really quickly put that walking foot on to show you how it works. The walking foot you can use with any stitch on the sewing machine. So if you wanted to leave this on all the time, then you can do. I need a screwdriver. There is a screwdriver included. I've just got so much stuff here. I can't see what I've done with it. See if I've got one. Put down in the cellar again, Skip. <laughs> Fancy that. Let me see if I can unscrew that without. So I'll answer Lisa's question while I'm trying to find a screwdriver. Um, she wants to know where does the buttonhole start? It'll start at the bottom. So if you're stitching a buttonhole like this, it'll start right at the bottom and then work itself up. So you'll have a straight stitch going up and then a zigzag stitch coming down. And then it'll go straight stitch at the other side and a zigzag stitch coming down. And the reason for that, the straight stitch that goes through the centre of those stitches is a strengthening stitch. And the zigzags on each side will come down both in the same position, uh, both in the same direction. So if you have a pile on the fabric, is going to flatten the pile both in the same way because it's going to look a bit odd if it goes round in a square like so. So I hope that's helped. Um, you can of course adjust the buttonholes. There are different styles of buttonholes in here as well and there are buttonholes for stretch fabrics which you can use as decorative stitches. So there are buttonholes that look as though they are quite antique -y. I found one Jo. I found it. Thank you. <laughs> 
There are buttonholes that look as though you've hand sewn them and there's a keyhole buttonhole as well so if you're putting um, a button on with a shank maybe you're sewing onto a jacket or something like that then that's the one they're going to use. Being a director on Sewing Street at the moment is exhausting. It does not keep you fit. Directing, we, we, Joe's not producing today, we have Hannah at home. So, oh, she's, has she got a coffee? Oh, now that what I've done. I'm just going to put the screw back in a little bit. Oh, I've done it. So the, the team we have here, so we are reduced in, we're not reduced in size, we've still got the same little team, but we're just spread out a little bit. So just me and Joe in the studio, two metres apart and a wall in between us. So Joe is directing and cameras and screwdriver hunter. So I'm here demonstrating, presenting, and I, I do do a nice cup of tea, I think. Um, Hannah's at home, she's producing from home. Hayley, head of TV, is at home. So she's heading TV at home. Um, Neil, managing director, he's at home. Managing and directing, man managing like, from home. Paul, head buyer and merchandiser, is buying and merchandising from home. And then Hayley Marketing is marketing at home. So if you're sending messages through to uh, Facebook, that'll be Hayley at home. Right, so. Hannah wants to know if I'd like a coffee. I would, but I think it'd be cold by the time you got it here. It's here th three weeks away. Right, so what I'm doing, let's put that needle down a little bit. I've put the, um, the foot on with that bar over the top of the needle clamp, and I'm just trying to screw this with my left hand and I'm right-handed, so it's always a little bit tricky to tighten that up. I think I'm going to receive a picture of a cup of coffee on time. OK. And then if you notice, let's just do a straight stitch. So if you switch the machine off and then on again, it'll default straight back to straight. Straight back to straight. Off you go. Need to thread this. Down it come. There we go. And up the side. And I can go to the back and press start. I'll tell you what we're going to do is put the feed dogs back up again, but I was going to show you where they were, wasn't it? So let's take that extension table off. It was fine in rehearsal. Around the back of the machine here is a lever. Now, if you flick that to one side, um, the feed dogs are down. So if you can see, the feed dogs are just underneath here. Now when I flick that back up again, they don't come up straight away. What you're going to have to do is turn the hand wheel, or when you start sewing, after your first stitch, those teeth come back up again. So you should be able to see them there now. Another thing I wanted to show you while the accessory compartment is off the machine, is this looks like a screw head. This is to even out or balance out stitches. So if you stitch out um, a buttonhole, say, and it's slightly longer on one side than the other or it's sitting diagonally, if you twist that, uh, put your screwdriver in there and twist it from one side to another, it will even out the stitch. And that's the same with any decorative stitches. These things happen sometimes. So if you don't get a perfect shape, then just, just try moving that a little bit so you can alter that yourself. So lots, lots of useful things about this machine. Right, we're nearly out of time, so let me, let me give you a recap. You have an Elna sewing machine, which is absolutely feature-packed. You have 380 stitches. Those are all programmable. So you have the alphabet in uh, uppercase, lowercase, you've got numbers, and there's another case. So you've got two cases, two fonts, um, and you've got lots of decorative, uh, decorative stitches as well. With the machine, it comes an extension table. You have the hard cover. You have a whole selection of feet that are included as well. You have a two-year warranty. As a bonus, we're going to give you, give you a walking foot and a free motion embroidery foot 
and uh, two metres of fabric. That whole bundle is worth £80 and you're getting that for absolutely nothing. That's for free. Um, Price-wise for £569, have a shop around. You may find this machine, but if you don't look for the machine, look for a machine of this price and then take a look at the features. Does it have an alphabet? Probably not at this price. Can you program them in? Can you do monogramming? Probably not at this price. Does it have um, the scissor feature so you can snip your threads? Maybe, maybe not. Can you use your machine without a foot pedal? That's going to be really important if you're maybe a youngster. Um, my, my two and a half year old granddaughter is learning how to sew. She's actually going to learn how to sew on my Janome 660 because it's the only machine I've got at the moment, but it's got a start, stop button and a speed control. She's got, she finds that a lot easier than at the moment at that age. They're not very well coordinated, so she wouldn't be able to use a foot pedal and, and create the speed there. So that's going to be so much easier for you as well. And of course, not everybody's legs work very well. So maybe Maybe that's better for you too. Um, the feet that are included, you've got the, um, the buttonhole foot, you've got an over edge foot, you've got your zipper foot, you have, um, what else is there, there's the quarter inch foot and you've got the blind hem foot and your satin stitch foot and remember these, oh yeah, I put it on the machine didn't I? So you have the um, free motion foot and the walking foot. I think the picture that you saw earlier on, I've got a different picture on there, but these are the two feet that you're getting and those are included for absolutely nothing. So what are you going to be sewing? Why do you want a sewing machine? Are you upgrading? Do you have a basic machine at the moment and you think it's about time? I just had a more reliable machine, a quieter, smoother machine, one with more stitch capabilities. It's an Elna sewing machine with a guarantee. You can't go wrong with a company like Elna. You've got a Great price for this machine, honestly. Take my word for that one. You've got your bonuses there as well. Um, are you sewing for the very first time? If, you're, if you know that sewing is going to be the hobby of your choice, if you want to be the dressmaker and the quilter and the homemaker and the crafter and the bag maker, you want to do all of these things with sewing, buy the machine that you will be able to grow with. It's a little bit like when you buy a camera. I wouldn't, guarantee, I wouldn't recommend that you buy a point and shoot and you just take a couple of pictures and that's all you can do. You want a camera that has the potential, the capability to, um, to do sepia, to put frames around things, to shoot in black and white, to do autofocus, to override, to do manual, to white balance, whatever you want with that camera. You won't be able to do all of that the first time you use that camera. You'll point and shoot with it, but you know you've got all of those other settings that you're going to use one day when you get used to it and when you learn it. So don't go for a very, very basic sewing machine because you're going to outgrow it very, very quickly. Go for the machine that will be the machine to suit the sewer that you intend to be. And I think you've got a fabulous one right here. Now I'm going to be using the machine in the second hour. We're going to do a little bit of bag making and we've got some lovely fabrics for you as well. We've got denims and we've got faux leathers. You can see bits and bobs that my team have made for me around the studio here. And we have the maker of the week coming up after the break as well. So if you want to ensure that you're getting your freebies with this machine, go check out your baskets, order on the phone lines and I'll see you in about three minutes.
Hello there, welcome back to Sewing Street. My name's Debbie Shaw, and in this hour, we're going to be looking at a little bit of bag making and some fabrics for you to use as well, not necessarily just, of course, for bag making. But I want to give you a reminder, first of all, of our early bird that we launched at the beginning of the last hour because this has been really popular. I'm thinking a little treat for yourself. You know, you may look at all of these amazing sewing machines we have, but just out of your reach at the moment. I can understand a lot of us are on a real budget. But if you just want a little bit of a pick-me-up or you want to give a gift to somebody you know who sews, then this, I think, is going to be ideal. Because in this little case here, you're getting all of those needles, you're getting some safety pins, you're getting a few pins as well, and there is a lovely pair of vintage inspired scissors and they're locked in, they're fastened in, so they're kept nice and safe. This is a hard cover and it's padded as well, so it feels absolutely luxurious. And you've got this delightful leopard skin print, but it's got a bit of foiling on it as well. So I think it's a bit posh, this one. And it comes with the scissors and the scissor keeper. So in effect, you're getting two pairs of scissors here for you just £9.98 and they're nice quality scissors as well. They're quite heavy, little embroidery scissors, thread snipping scissors um, or if you're um, hand embroidering or cross stitching those are perfect for you. So if you are able to travel again ever one day um, then these would be great to take to workshops or just to have in your handbag a little repair kit for you maybe. Now price wise we've had a I've had a look around and this alone in John Lewis says is six pounds ninety nine. And you know it's worth it, it's worth every penny. But you're getting the both of those for nine pounds and ninety eight, but we are now down to single figures. So this I'm afraid I don't think is going to be one of those early bird specials that's going to be on the website for a few days. However, if you do take a look on our website on sewingstreet.com, you will find a couple of the early birds that we've, we've still got there from earlier on in the week. Still at the same price, so still reduced prices. So check out your baskets if you're ordering those as quickly as you can so that you don't miss out. Um, we do give you one postage all day, which I think is a fantastic offer. I don't know any other shopping channel that does that. So if you order anything throughout the day, all at separate times, we'll process your order at midnight tonight. So we, we, we know that you're placing more orders and we're only going to charge you one postage all day long. So if you've ordered the sewing machine, and lots of you have, you're only going to pay 3 95 for your postage. And then if you're thinking, that, oh, I didn't see that early bird. Oh, I wish I'd have ordered that. That's another 3 95 I've got to pay. Not if you order today, not if you order before me. If you come back tomorrow, we'll charge you another 3 95 But not if you order today. I think that's a great offer. So that's your early bird, but that's going to be going. So I think the next time we see that will be to say goodbye. Um, just to mention messages, we've had lots of messages coming through, so I hope you're okay and I hope you're fine and dandy and taking care of yourself. If you want to come and have a chat, then come and have a chat um, on Facebook. So go to our Facebook page and if you go to visitor posts, that's where I am, I've got my phone here. My last message is Jean, I don't think we've got any more since then, um, on this page. But if you wanted to send a message, then that's absolutely fine, that'll come through to me eventually as well. So let me know what you're up to. And um, have you been following Sewing Street since we started about a month ago? Or is it the first time you've seen us this morning? Like to know any more about us, where we're going, where we're heading? Have you got any suggestions of things that you'd like to see? When things get back to normal again, uh, oh, we're going to bring you embroidery, we're going to bring you smocking, um, as in English smocking, which is really exciting. We've got some amazing felting kits that Delphine's working on right now, so that when we are back to normal and we can have guests in the studio again, we're going to have some amazing products so thank you so much for sticking with us throughout these very strange times and we'll stay here for as long as we possibly can um, presenting wise it's um, it's just me and John is that our John that messaged in oh it's a different John yeah we have we're a very small team so there's me and John presenter um, there's Joe who's directing, there's Hannah who's producing from home. Kat's normally here on, on cameras, I think she's EPPing from home at the moment. Um, and then we've got an MD, we have a head of TV, we have a head of buying and we have a head of marketing. Everyone, everybody's a head of everything here, but I'm head of presenting because because <laughs> we're so small, we, we, we've just got amazing job titles. <laughs> I'd like to be a, a doctor of presenting, I think, that sounds good. Do doctor of presenting, professor, pre professor presenting, that'll do for me. So yeah, we are a, a very a very small team. Sorry, what did John say when he messaged in? Oh, he says thanks for making lockdown more bearable. Thank you. Um, 
He's going straight from the show to the sewing room. Thank you, John. Hopefully we've, we've inspired you and a few other people as well. Thank you very much. Um, OK, so, yeah, when we are back to normal again, uh, which hopefully won't be too long, I don't know, um, we'd, we'd, we are still working away behind the scenes to bring you some amazing shows going forward. We're still bringing new products all the time, and myself and John are going to be bringing you as many demonstrations as we can as well. So, where shall we start with all of our new things? Let's look at bags. Now, I've started making this, so I'll give you an idea of the kind of bag that you're going to make. Do you know, before we do this, I forgot to, I forgot to do Maker of the Week, and it's a new thing. I only heard about it yesterday. Um, so, John, other presenter, and Vicky, other presenter, have been through our Facebook uh, fans page, and they've picked out two projects that they, or three projects, sorry, so two projects. How many projects have you picked out? Three. Three projects. So has one picked out one and one's picked out two? They or they're both, pick, they're both picked out one. They've picked, they've picked one each individually and then they've picked one together. That's that. So we've got three winners, basically. And these are they. So Leslie Evans, Christine Beard and Paula Wright, congratulations. Let's have a look at what they've made. So this is Leslie with a clamshell patchwork design. That is beautiful. Well done, congratulations. I can see why you were picked. And... Oh, John says he thought this quilt was really cute. And then this is Christine. Oh, they're nice. Oh, they're, they're, these were chosen because they're quite apt. Um, because they're hand sanitizer cases. They look really professional. They look like you bought them from a shop. Well, good work, Christine. And then finally, we have Paula Wright. Oh, that's sweet. Is that hand sewn? Looks like it is. Well done. Oh, is that that's a little carpet bag, isn't it? Hmm. Vicky loved it because uh, she said it looks like a street, a little bit like a sewing street. If that was Sewing Street, it'd just have the library and it'd just have the cafe. And it might have a little surgery at the end of there as well. Because we do a sewing surgery on the first Monday of the month. So the next one's going to be a week on Monday, which is Monday the 6th. So if you have any questions, basically it's me. Um, but you send in lots and lots of uh, questions that I endeavour to answer. So if you've got a problem with your machine, if you want to see something specific demonstrated, uh, if you've seen a particular tool that you're not sure how to use it, send me a message either on my Facebook page, on the Sewing Street Facebook page, and we'll, uh, we'll gather all of those messages together and the questions together and bring you a show on Monday the 6th at 9 o'clock in the morning. And if you want to enter the Mater of the Week, go to the Facebook page for more details there. So, oh, and all of the winners have won free PNP. There you go. Don't know what you're going to be winning next week, but... Mm. So, let's get back to bags. I, I sewed this on at home to start with because this is all hand sewing, so... But you get an idea of what the bag's going to look like. So it'll have a squared off base. The kit is to make the bag. So you'll have um, the faux leather base, faux leather handles, and enough denim to not just make the outside of the bag, but the lining as well. So this is as it's going to come to you. There's your bag. This is really soft as well. You can pin through it quite easily. Those are your handles, and again, they're sturdy and they're strong. Um, I've got a tip for those as well. Can you hear somebody running through the studio out of breath? Joe's on cameras and directing, so it's multi-talented. And you have your magnetic snap as well, so you can make quite a large tote bag. It doesn't come with a pattern, and in fact, the instructions on the bag base will show you how to put this in, but it doesn't show you how to line it. But I'll show you that all. If I, if I don't have time to actually show it from start to finish, I will certainly explain how to do that in the show. And you're going to receive half a metre of the medium coloured denim. But this is really wide. So let me just open that up to show you. It's nice and soft as well. It's... It's at 160... It feels like 160 wide to me by half a metre, so you've got a lot there. So the way that I was, oh, sorry, I'm making a noise again. The way that I was thinking, if you fold it that way and that way, you can actually make a bag that's that big. Or if you wanted to use your own lining at home, you can extend the use of your denim and use that for a different project as well. 
So that's your bundle. It's £33.99. So remember, denim, base, handles, magnetic snap, all included there. So that's everything that you're getting. So we've got some more bits and bobs for you as well. So should, should we go through the other denims? Oh, no, we've got some more bag bottoms. So the same shape and size as the red one. This is just the bag base on its own. It is a faux leather, again, so it's not real leather, which I think is great. And that's just £11.99. And we've got another set of the handles, again, in faux leather. So this is for two of them, and again, they're really sturdy. And those are £14.99. So that's BVU X87 if you'd like to place an order. And you can order online and you can order on the phone. Number down there at the bottom of your screen. So. Oh, if you wanted to go for the red individually, we have got those as well. So if you, I don't want those red handles and I don't, I don't want your denim. You just want the base, you can just go for the base. And that's £11.99 on its own, FWUX10. And if you want to go for the handles on their own, if you don't want to add any one of our bag bits, you just want the handles to make your own style of bag, those again are £14.99. And they're 60 centimetres long, if you were wondering, size-wise. We've got magnetic snaps and things like that as well. Have a look on the website if you wanted to go for any of those. So, shall we start to make up this bag? Let's make a space. I'll show you those later on. Or you can have a look on the website and get ahead, get ahead of yourself. Now, what I've done here, I need to, I need to measure these again for you. Um, I did have a tape measure, didn't I? I had, a, I had a tape measure in the last hour. But I have no idea what I've done. Oh, there we go. So, I'm going to open this all out. I, I did this at home last night, so I thought I'd make a start on it because um, this is all hand sewing. I thought it would take up the rest of the hour just sewing this together, which wouldn't be very good viewing, really, would it? Um, so that's the base as it comes to you. And I've cut two pieces of denim that measure 10 and a half inches by the width of the base, which is 18 inches. And then I've just overlapped the denim to where this overlaps here and made a hand stitch. And I used embroidery thread just to sew that in place. So one piece on the top, uh, on one side, sorry, and one piece on the opposite side here. And then with the handles, I measured these so that they're sitting just inside the cutout square bag base because this is going to be folded around so that'll make the sides there. And what I found easy was to... Looking for pins. Because these want to kind of fight back because this is really kind of sturdy and stiff. And these were a little bit crumpled up, to be honest. So I put some glue right around the edge and a dot in the middle, so not where I was going to sew. And then I put a pin through here, because it's really easy to pin. Wait till the glue dries, and then do the stitch. So not only does that hold the, uh, the handle in place as you're sewing, because it will want to twist. You can see it's trying to pull the fabric here. It'll be fine when I get the lining in there. Um, but it also makes the, the join stronger. So, because this is only a small line of stitches around here, and if you're going to carry something heavy, I'm kind of thinking you want something a little bit more sturdy than just a few hand stitches. So, the glue, I used um, Gutemann 8640, and just let that dry before you sew it on. And then the lining is the other half of the, the denim, and I've put some H640 on the back of it which we don't have in stock, but it is coming soon. I don't normally put interfacing and stabilizers on linings of bag. I like to put them on the outside of the bag because it's the outside of the bag that you can feel. But on this case, I didn't want to risk ironing on the back of the faux leather, so I put it on the lining instead. So I'm just going to put these two pieces together. I've already cut it to size. 
like so. In fact, it's a little bit longer, I think. Let me just re-measure this. Because the handles have been twisting a little bit. So let's pin you in place. And then I'm going to cut the lining to the same size as the outside and cut these cutout shapes out as well. Yes, that's just a little bit shorter. I need to trim that down slightly. You don't have to have the bag as deep as this if you wanted to make something a little bit smaller. And again, if you wanted to make the most of your denim and use a different fabric for your lining, that's entirely up to you. So let's cut across here. I would use my rotary cutter ruler and mat at home, but we haven't, I haven't got that much space here today, so we'll use scissors. There we go. So, I just need to trim off the, the wadding and a little bit on the side of that bag, it's a little bit wide. It isn't quite a, a quick bag to make like this as well, but if I were making this for myself, I would add maybe a zip pocket on the inside or put a flap over the top for an extra little bit of security. Let's cut out this section in the centre here and down here because that's the bit that's going to make the base square and then the same on this side. Like so. Oh, just need to trim off this bit here at the end. There. Not through the handles because then you wouldn't be able to hold it. <laughs> Might be an idea as well. If you like the style of the bag, oh, oh there's a thought. Um, you could um, use this as a template to cut some of your faux leather with and then make another bag using um, the same kind of technique and maybe make some handles out of the faux leather as well. So before you sew this together, I'll just take a few measurements then you can repeat it if you like the style. We need a popper on the inside. So this is now my lining. I've still got a, a bit of overhang. Turn that down a little bit. There we go, that'll do. So I need to put a popper on the inside. So this is the lining and that's how it's going to go together. So I will need to use the popper out of the kit, I'm afraid, because I haven't brought mine. Um, I'll get an invoice later, don't worry. These are really nice and strong as well. They're quite big. It's got a protective cap on that side, so we'll take that off. So I need to measure and mark the center of the top of the, um, sorry, the cellar again. There we go. Of the center here. So that was 18 inches across. So I did nine inches. So Poppy sent a question in asking if I like the pre-made bases and handles. I like it. I love making bags, but whatever bag I'm making, I like to put a little bit of hardware out there on there as well, or something that's, that has been bought, whether that's a D-ring or um, rectangular rings and fastenings and things like that. So, and I think with, that gives it, that gives your bag a shop bought look. And I think it's the same with the base and the handles. The base you could probably make yourself from the faux leathers. These types of handles are a little bit more difficult to make. So yes, that's when I'd use a shop bought one. They're so much easier because you've got tubing inside here. I don't actually have any of that at home. Um, and this would be quite stiff to sew through to be able to make a sturdy handle like that. Plus making a soft handle, that's fine. But... So I have made a dot um, right where I want these to go. So I'm now going to make a little snip either side of there and that's going to be the same distance as the prongs that hold this together. So don't make the hole too big. Push that through there. And then you've got a back somewhere. There you go. That goes over here 
and you probably find it easier to squish those legs open than together. So on the other side we'll do the same. You can use your quick and pick to do this as well. And measure and mark if you're not too sure where the holes are going to go. Make the holes small to start with because you can always make a small hole bigger. If you cut a big hole in your denim, you've just got a big hole in your denim. Put the back on and squish that open. So I've measured about to the centre of there, about one and three quarter inches from the top. And then that would fasten like so. Oh, just to give you a mention quickly, the red, the red bag bottom on its own is about to sell out. If you've got this in your baskets on the website, please can check out as quickly as you can. Or if you want to order now, then go through to the phone lines 0800 001433 and place your order as soon as you can, please, because that's going to go. Right, let's start putting this bag together. So I am going to sew right sides together across the top of each side. So I'm going to have to fold the handle out of the way and just sew the edge here. So there, there's a handle wants to get in on the action look, but we're just going to have to make sure that's out of the way. And I'm just going to use the edge of the foot as a seam allowance. So let's push this out of the way a little bit so I've got some support under here. And line at the edges. So that the handle, handle wants to flip itself back to the right way, so I'm just ignoring it. So that goes there. I've got the walking foot on the sewing machine um, because it's thick layers of fabric. Let's just move that and let's just sew. I'm going to stop there and cut because I went a little bit skew if around the handle. It's because I stopped to look up to make sure you could see what I was doing. Not a problem. So there's the handle lock. Out the way you go. Line up the edges. You could pin or clip these if it makes it easier. And just sew down the side. It'll make sense in a minute when I take, when I take it up and show you. Or I could do that a little bit, couldn't I? That would help. And there we go. So just carry on sewing down the side. And there we go. So what kind of sewing do you do at home? Are you a bag maker? I love making bags. Because um, I like figuring out how to do it. So, for instance, there's, there's no pattern for this bag. You just get the bag base, you get the handles. I thought, what am I going to do with that then? So I, I just wanted to make a bag as big as I possibly can. So that's how this came about. So I'm sewing together the opposite end, so I've got a big tube. Whoops. It's going to be a big bag, this one. This is the most difficult bit, because those handles are quite sturdy. And they do want to get in the way. I'm having none of it. Just to mention as well, because it's one piece of denim that goes all the way around the lining, um, this hand sewing doesn't have to be too strong because when you put things inside the bag, it's the lining that's going to take the weight. But if you wanted to put a little bit of glue behind there as well, just to make it a little bit stronger, then um, that's your decision. If, by the way, after the show, you think, oh, should I should have taken more notice of the vast, I've decided now I want to make a bag, um, have a look on our YouTube channel. Probably by later on this afternoon, um, the shows will be on there. And they'll always be on there, so you can take a look back over the last four weeks' worth of shows from when we first started and have a look at the different kind of sewing projects and techniques that we have for you. The way you keep that straight. That's that one. And then we're going to open this up. While you're there on YouTube, by the way, I've been putting some tutorials for children on there. So I thought this, because my granddaughters both want to learn how to sew, and I just thought it might be a, an ideal time if you are at home 
with your young children. And it's the, the right from basic, how to thread a needle and how to uh, thread uh, tie a knot in the end of the needle, blankets. It's all one felt at the moment, but I will be going on to teaching children how to use sewing machines as well. So, right, so I'm lining up the front two pieces and sewing those right sides together, but don't sew over that cut out corner. And again, at home, if you want to be really accurate, a few pins wouldn't go amiss. I just want to try and make sure that I do finish this in the show because I've still got more to show you. All right, so we have this. I, I like to start from the seam here. So get out of the way. So I can, so oh, blimey handles. Um, so I can line up the seams at the front and the back. And I'm leaving the Valiseline kind of sticking upwards because it's easier to sew. And remember, this is the lining side that I'm sewing. So I will need to leave a gap so I can turn it the right side out. So I'm going to stop here, reverse a few stitches, cut my thread, leave a gap, move it down, foot down, reverse a few stitches, and carry on. And you will find it, I mean, with, with this sewing machine, if this is the one that you're going for, um, you will find with thicker fabrics that a walking foot helps you. Or if you're sewing through layers of fabric as well, um, because it helps to stop the fabric slipping together. They're sometimes called an even feed foot, because it feeds the fabric through at the same rate as the top from the bottom. And a, a typical kind of scenario, if you will, is if you're sewing together curtains. So if you've ever had a, a long strip of heavy fabric, and then your lining fabric's a lot finer, and you cut them to exactly the length that they need to be, but when you get to the end of all of that row of sewing things have moved a little bit that's prevented with a walking foot because it feeds slippy fabric through or finer fabric through at the same rate as a heavy fabric so you're not going to get any kind of distortion in slipping well worth investing in a walking foot if you don't have one but expect to pay about 40 pounds for them between 30 and 40 pounds for what they're all quite expensive but if you're buying this machine you get one anyway so you don't have to worry about that so let's sew down the front of the bag. Now this is the important area here because I want to make sure that the top of the base is lining up together. Because it's going to look a little bit odd. Well, not odd, it will be noticeable if they're not matched up perfectly. So, in your own time. And there we go. So let's sew down here. I've had actually two questions recently on my Facebook page about bag linings not sitting very well inside the bag. Uh, in fact, one was a fabric box and one was a handbag. If you make the lining very slightly smaller, so where, where the top of the bag is, where the join is, so you've got the seam that goes across here, keep that the same, but then as you start to, uh, to sew down, just a very, you know, a half a millimetre, just really taper that very gently. And it'll make the lining a little bit smaller than the outside of the bag, so it sits inside better. That's, that's the kind of questions we need on the surgery, if you have anything like that. So if you think of any questions after the hour that you'd like answering, then pop a, pop a, pop a, mes pop a, pop a, pop a message on Facebook. So again, this is the outside of the bag. Stop. And let's do this. Now, when you're sewing the PU, your denim needle is going to be the best needle to use. This is a universal needle that's on the machine when I started, and it's coping very well. Because it looks like leather, doesn't mean that you need to use a leather needle. A leather needle has a point that's shaped like a chisel. So when it goes into the leather, it makes a split, not a round hole. Um, two reasons for that. Um, it allows the thread to then pull through, because you can imag imagine with leather there's going to be a lot of friction as the thread goes through, and your stitches can be very tight. So it allows the thread to go through. But by having a split instead of a hole, leather can heal itself. So it's more likely to, well, it's easier for it to heal a, a tiny split than it is to heal a round hole. So just a bit of a tip there. Know it all. Now I'm going to squish that um, bottom open. I'm going to open up the seam so the fabric isn't too bulky. And we're going to sew straight across. 
So there it is squished together, squish that open, doesn't really matter that much, and so straight across the opening. And that'll make the base square. So push you out the way. I keep going for the foot pedal, it's not plugged in, is it? So we'll go backwards a couple of stitches to lock them off, and away we go. And we'll do this in all four corners. So again, squish and squish. So we'll like that. And then we'll sew. Come on, I said squish. Thank you. So backwards a couple of stitches and forwards. And then the same with the uh, with the lining. So squish open and sew across. This is going to look so nice. I might enter it in the make of the week. <laughs> so just open that up as well and sew. So actually, next week I'm, I'm going. I've been asked to judge the make of the week. So it'd be very interesting to see what you come up with. I'm judging fabric designer of the of the year this year as well. Yeah, and uh, and I'm judging uh, best new child's crafting project later on. If it still goes ahead, I haven't heard any different. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm not letting the grandchildren in, so that would just be, that'd be wrong, wouldn't it? Grandma? Oh, can you imagine? Grandma, why didn't you choose me? Right, let's find the hole I left as a turning gap and turn all of this through. I may have left a bigger hole, actually, because that was rather small. No, here we go. So let's, this is called bagging out. And that would be called bagging out if you were turning a jacket through as well. All right. Yeah, that hole could have been bigger. You may hear a few stitches cracking in a second. Let me get the, the other handle out. interesting TV isn't it? Oh there we go. There we go, come on. There. Um, the denim bundle by the way, we are down to single figures on that one. Come on. So that's the bag base, exactly what you see here, the bag base, the bag handles, half a metre of denim, but it's 160 wide, so there's an awful lot of denim there. And you've got your magnetic <laughs> snap. Why didn't I just leave a bigger, a bigger hole? Here we go. So, where's the hole gone? Here, let's put my hand in there and push this out. And in fact, the red handle and base on their own have now sold out. So if you wanted red handle and base, the only way to get hold of these is now in this bundle. So I'm not going to sew the whole closed just at the moment. Let's see how the bag's looking. And I push the lining inside. I love sewing. I love looking at pieces of fabric that are two-dimensional and flat and creating something that's got shape and form to it. Now I'm going to top stitch around the top. But I just want to make sure that's in the right place. That's there, that's there. And that's how I'm looking. So it's quite a sizable bag, isn't it? Obviously that needs pressing. I think what I'm going to do as well, you know I said I popped some glue behind there, I think I'm going to glue up here too, 
just to make sure that that handle stays up. That might have been quite difficult to do while the um, while I was sewing the whole thing together, but I'll be able to do that now. So I'm just going to top stitch around the top. I'll leave the hole in the bottom for now. So I've got my machine on a non-slip mat. So it doesn't slip very well. So this is the finishing touch. You could use the, um, the free arm if you wanted to. I'm going to lengthen the stitch because this isn't a seam, so it doesn't have to be strong. Looking for my foot pedal again, haven't got one. And so, so I'll sew a few stitches first. Then I'm going to stop and move that handle out of the way again. And then carry on sewing. And the hole in the centre that I need to sew together, you can either do that by hand or you can just sew it together on the sewing machine because it's inside, so probably no one's going to see it there anyway. So I'm just feeding this through with the seam here right on the top and just sew all the way around. That's going to help to keep the layers together and it'll give it a nice out the way you finishing touch as well. This is going to be a really sturdy bag. Now I'm going by hand over the lumpy seam. So I'm turning the hand wheel towards me. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Just because it is a really thick layer and though I'm sure the machine is going to be fine. But I do the same if you are sewing over the, you know, the fell seed at the seam at the side of a pair of jeans that can have up to six layers of denim. If you're coming up to a seam like that, if you're hemming jeans, then again, I'd turn the hand wheel by hand just to ease the, the machine over. No matter what machine you've got, I'd always do that. Almost back to the beginning, so we're almost done. And then we better have a look at that faux leather. So just give it a help over there. Over you go. And we're done. Snip the thread. So I, I give it a press for the, obviously the, um, the fold at the bottom you're not going to press, but if you put your iron inside the bag and blast it with steam, that'll help that crease disappear from the centre of the bag. So that's quite a sizeable bag, isn't it? So you can put extra pockets on there, you could have a patch pocket on the front, you could maybe put some applique, you could put a flap that goes over the front and use your magnetic snap there, you could put a zip in the top. So basically you're getting the components, the ingredients if you like, and then you can make it your own recipe when you get them home. So there's no pattern with this one, but there is everything that you need to make a really large tote bag for just £33.99. Right, oh this, this uh, faux leather, I, I, let me come around here, get some there. This is super soft. You can move these out of the way. And really easy to use to sew with. So I'm making, I haven't got a bin down here. I'll tidy it later. No more messages on Facebook. Got any questions? Come and ask them, remember. Um, oh, we've had some messages. So, oh, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Uh, I lost my jacket, thank you very much. And she takes it, I made it myself. Um, of course. Um, thanks for all of the great demos and keeping your spirits up. No, thank you. It's lovely to have your company this morning as well. Thank you very much. Uh, then we've had a message. Morning, Debbie. Oh, thank you for my daily dose of sewing. And that's, and that's on Instagram. Oh, no, thank you for that. Yeah, have a look at our Instagram page and sewing streets. Lots of ways you can get in touch and see what we're up to. Um, right, I'll go, take you through the colours and then I'll take you through the benefits. So soft. So this is the mustard. This is what you might gather. This is my favourite colour. This is the one that the bag's been made in here, just to show you that you can use the, the faux leathers with a contrasting fabric as well. It works really well with the denim too. Um, there's half a metre and this again is 116 width. So you're getting a sizeable piece of fabric there. And because it's measured by the half metre, if you wanted more, so if you wanted to make a jacket or you wanted to make a skirt out of this, if you order two of these, you'll get a one metre length. And if you order four of these, you'll have a two metre length and so on and so forth. And it's only £6.99, and that is great value for money. You know, sometimes with faux leathers, 
and laminated fabrics, they can be very stiff, they can be very glossy and shiny and they can look very cheap and be really difficult to work with. This isn't, it's butter soft, it's so easy to work with. I'll show you that in just a sec. So there's the mustard, favourite colour. I'll, I'll go for a couple together. So mustard and navy look really good. The mustard and the brown go really well together. The mustard and the black go really well together. So if you can go for a couple, remember you've only got that one, three ninety-five for your postage. Now this is a really deep navy blue. It's almost got a, a, a purpley sheen to it as well. But it's really classy. Imagine a bag made out of this. That would just so expensive. I've even made piping out of the um, the faux leather as well because it's it's so soft. It's just like sewing through any kind of fabric. It's really easy to use. So a plain bag with piping in a contrast colour, I just think it would look amazing. So this is your indigo. This is a colour I haven't actually seen before, so it must be a new one. And look at that kind of purpley, inky sheen it has. This again is only £6.99. pence. Go for a couple if you can, because mixing and matching them together, they just look amazing. Then we've got the black. It does have a little bit of a grain to it, so it does have a, a leather look. Um, not all of them do. The mustard doesn't have so much of the grain, but on the black, when you get that home, you'll really see the grain kind of standing out on there. And again, you've got your um, half a metre, by the half metre, and or do by the half metre, um, but order by the half metre and you can order longer lengths if you like. This and, that and, and the mustard, dark brown and mustard, what a classy combination is that? I'm imagining satchels, um, so you've got the base of the satchel in this one with the flap and the straps in the, in the mustard, I love that mustard. So that's the dark brown and then we've got the red, red and black, that's a classy combination. But the red and the indigo, the red and the dark brown. Oh, yeah, I'm just, I really hope you order more than one of these. You, you're going to love working with them. And even better, you're going to love the kind of results, whatever project it is you're making. So there's your red, which is a really proper bright pillar box red at 6 .99. And then finally, now this is the classy one. This is the elegant colour, I think, the taupe. And this is, oh, the dark brown particularly, this will go so well together. The nice thing about neutral colours, the browns, the taupes and creams and things like that, they don't clash. So you could put this with any other tone of brown and it's just going to match perfectly. If you're using, you know, mixing fabrics together, maybe you've got a, a hessian or a calico or a heavy weight of natural cotton like that would look really good. And it does go very well with, uh, with other um, synthetic fabrics like cork maybe, if you're saying with cork. Um, yeah, it is, it's beautiful. Now let, let me show you. So, first of all, it has a knitted back to it. So the front's the laminate, the PU, the back's knitted, and that means it's got stretch. So it's not going to be bouncy. If you're making bag handles out of it, don't worry, your bag's not going to be dangling on the floor, but it does have a little bit of give, and that means it's comfortable. So this is a dressmaking weight. So if you wanted to make a, you know, a jacket, if you're making a skirt, it has not just the stretch to make it... Um, fit well and be comfortable it also has a memory so you know sometimes when you're sitting down particularly when you're wearing leathers like this uh, or faux leathers like this and they stretch around the bottom or they stretch around your knees and you get a baggy bit if you give that a blast of steam from the back afterwards it'll shrink back down again um, so it'll keep its shape you can wash these now it's recommended just going in the cellar just bear with me you can wash them it's recommended on a cool wash I've washed on a 30 degree wash and it's been absolutely fine. When you get them home, they may be rather creased up. They don't lose the colour either. When you, when you wash them, you'll be really surprised. This is the hottest iron, which isn't recommended. But I just want to show you here, you've got a big crease right down the centre. I don't want a big crease right down the centre. I can't do this because I'm just going to melt it, so please make sure that you don't touch the, um, the faux leather from the top. But on the back of here, you can give it a good old blast. I'm going to take this off. I don't know if I should, but that's really getting on my nerves. And now there's little spikes sticking out where the navel was. There we go. I'll have an invoice for that one as well. So let's put my steam on full. In fact, we'll give it a blast as well. And 
we're just going to give that a good old press. Whoops. So even though I'm putting a really hot iron on the back, when I turn it over, it's just gone. That's still quite hot, actually. But the crease has just literally dropped away. So don't worry about working with this. You probably find that you, you won't need a Denny needle for this. It's not that thick. Um, what you may need is a non-stick foot or a walking foot on your sewing machine to help feed that through. Uh, just to mention as well, because I have brought you this fabric for a few years now and I have had some comments about the edge. That's the selvage. It's supposed to look like that, just like a selvage on any other fabric, you cut that away. But this actually shows you the way that it's made, so you've got a stretchy backing, and then that's the PU, which is like a plastic coating which goes over the front. So don't get that home and think, oh, that's a bit odd. That, that is the selvage, that's what it's supposed to be like. I would love to stay here for another hour talking about this fabric, because I love it so much, but I can't, because I've still got more to show you, and I've got a job to do. So let's take a look at our denim. We've got three different shades of denim for you. A light, a medium and a dark. So should we do light first? This has that um, almost a stonewash faded kind of look, doesn't it? So that's your paler colour. Um, mix and match these together. Oh, actually, I wonder what that was. A yes, with indigo. So that could be your bag base, that could be like the middle part of the bag, and then you can make the handles out of that as well, and you've still got enough left over to make a skirt with. Um, so that's the light. Um, you've got half a metre, and these are 160 centimetres wide, so again, they're really nice and wide. And it's eight ounce in weight as well, so it's, it's not... <laughs> Do you remember in the 70s? Most of you won't. Um, you couldn't get soft denim, it was before stonewashing or anything like that to come into effect, and denim was stiff. And you'd use sandpaper to make it softer, you'd sit in the, in a warm bath wearing your jeans to make them shrink to fit you, and it was ever so difficult to wear, never mind to sew. Um, but this is sturdy, but it's still really, really soft. I've just got a warm breeze of air down here, I've left the iron on right underneath my feet. It's quite nice, actually. Um, so that's the light. This is the medium. This is the one that you're getting in the bundle, if you're going to go for the bag bundle. That is such a good price at £4.99. Do I show you how wide this is as well? So you're getting an awful lot. Look at that. It's 160 wide. I like the salvage on these as well. You could actually use that because you've got the frayed bit there, so it's nice and fluffy. Use that as a trim. Um, so that's the medium, and then we've got the dark. And again, that there you go, is £4.99, BRL J43, if you want to tour to that. More to show you. Um, let me just, give, just shush, shush, give you a reminder of the black of our faux leather. Because Sue wants to see the back of it, so we aim to please. It's knitted on the back, Sue. So again, this is the selvage, that's how it's supposed to be. That's the back. Now, just to mention, this, this won't fray, because it's PU, but if you are going to see the edge, you may get a little bit of the lining going fluffy behind it. So it's easy to hem, so just fold that over. A tip for you, or a couple of tips for you when you're sewing with the, with the faux leathers, use your fabric clips. which I've dropped on the floor. Um, so use your clover fabric clips um, instead of pins. If you do pin and you get a hole in there, again, give it a blast of seam from the back and the hole should shrink back again. So don't worry too much about that. It is easy to pin, but it's better if you can use your fabric clips to hold that together. If you're sewing a seam or you're pressing a seam open, um, use a fabric glue stick to fold that over and hold it in place before you sew. Because uh, you, can't, you can't put a crease in this because that would mean ironing from the top. And that's just not going to work. Even if you put, if you put a pressing cloth over the top, it's not going to work. So 
glue it down. If you're, um, if you're doing a larger area or if I'm, if I'm making a bag handle, I normally cut a strip of fabric four inches wide, fold to the centre, then fold in half again. I'll spray the whole of the back of it with 505 spray and then stick it together before I sew. And then you don't even have to clip that. So hope that helps. Um, Taupe's really popular for that one, by the way. Let me give you a reminder of the 570 while we've still got some stock left here. This is such good value. You've got in total here 380 stitches. You don't need an awful lot more than that, do you? You have the buttonhole stitches, you've got utility stitches, you've got so many decorative stitches. You have the alphabet in uppercase and lowercase and numerics on the machine as well. And there's a memory so you can do monograms, you could write words um, and you can store up to 20 icons all in one go. The extension table is included. You have a, um, a hard cover with it. You've got a two year warranty with this machine. It's easy to use. You don't need to use a foot pedal. It's got a start stop button and you've got the, uh, the the snips there as well. You have here 200 stitches, so utility stitches, decorative stitches, embroidery stitches, satin stitches, 200 of those in total. And then in the manual, you have an extra. <laughs> You have all of your extra. There's not enough room on the machine to put all of the stitches, but these are the extra stitches that you have as well. So there's 180 of numbers, of alphabet, uppercase, lowercase, more icons here, of spaces, of all of these with the accents, don't know what they are, um, but they're all included as well. The instructions are really easy to follow. You've got lots of diagrams. The faggoting stitch that I used earlier on, that's even demonstrated in here as well. Um, how to sew zips in, how to put buttonholes, um, applique tips on here as well. Now this is an exclusive bundle while we have the stock because we're also going to give you, that's your accessory compartment, that's all of your bits and bobs that come with it. There's a walking foot on here. That's free, that's a bonus for you. There is also a free, um, free motion embroidery foot. And there is a bundle of fabric, which is somewhere. You're getting two meters of fabric included as well, all in pastel colors. That bundle with all of the freebies, we have a limited amount of stock. So the next few people to pick up the phone or go on the website and order your 570 will get the free bundle. After that, you won't get the fabric, you won't get the walking foot and you won't get the, uh, the free motion embroidery foot. Those are worth £80. So that's just a bonus to say thank you for the first few people that come through and order. Um, oh, the mustard PU, by the way, that's just sold out. Sorry about that. We've still got some of the others. Must, must get that back in stock again. Um, try it. You've got a really sturdy, quiet, sophisticated, feature-packed sewing machine, which is compact in size. Don't be put off by size and don't be put off by the price being so low. This is a beast of a sewing machine. You're going to be able to make denim bags. You're going to be able to make curtains. You're going to be able to start quilting. You're going to be the dressmaker. You're going to be the homemaker. It'll be the curtains and the, uh, the kitchenware, your tea cozies and oven gloves. Whatever it is you decide to sew, you've got a machine that's going to be able to support you. You've got a machine that's going to be able to cope with all of those different things. As a beginner sewer, if you're serious about your sewing and you're in this kind of price bracket. This is a really simple machine to use. You're pressing buttons. It's as easy as using a mobile phone, if not easier. But maybe you're upgrading. Maybe you've got a machine that you borrowed or an old machine or an electronic machine. You just think, no, I just, I, I, I just want something. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be sewing so much over the next few weeks. I want a machine that will be able to put up with the punishment that I give it. That's the way that I look at sewing machines because mine are relentless. Mine is relentless, I've only got one. But this is a machine that I'm sure you're going to be over the moon with. Elna British based in Stockport near Manchester. And a reliable company that have been in the business for a long, long time. Have a look at reviews of Elna sewing machines. You will be delighted. Now we're just about out of time here, but let's have a look at what's coming up tomorrow. So you'll have John's company tomorrow uh, with the Liberty Winterbourne fabric collection at nine o'clock in the morning. And then Fisker's Tools is coming up at 10 o'clock. 
I'll be with you again on Wednesday and Thursday next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to be bringing you at the moment, but we'll try and get as many demonstrations in as we possibly can. Don't forget sewing surgery coming up on the 6th of April, a week on Monday. So either send me your questions to my Facebook page, Debbie Shaw, or to the Sewing Street Facebook page. Hayley will be making note of any questions that come through and we will endeavour to answer them. Uh, don't forget your make of the week. Have a look on the Facebook page there again if you wanted to enter. We'll be picking out three winners again. Um, this time next weekend. So I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.